This is it, everyone. The sticky finish to what has been a four-month journey through all 14 crops within Don't Starve Together. Not only that, though, we also threw in some weeds to help cover our farming needs, and there might just be another on the way. But here's the thing, folks. While they are certainly smelly, I don't think we're giving durians enough credit here. From hidden potential to fantastic synergies, these pungent plants may end it all with the bang actually. Because even if they are planning on hurting our stomachs with each and every bite, I don't think anyone can deny how respectable that 25 hunger is at the end of the day. It easily competes with the best around when it comes to raw and cooked crops, and a little sanity scare never hurt anybody. Especially when we can forego the scare entirely. For any work players out there, Durian's could potentially be a top 3 food for you, as she gains a whopping 48.3 hunger per munch without any side effects whatsoever. That's honestly insane for a fruit that also happens to count as a monster food mind. But speaking of just that, do note how Durian's can actually replace actual monster meat in several cases, including the process of feeding Wabi here. That said, most players are going to first experience a durian's monstrous side when attempting to cook them into something as while they are a fruit any two you add is going to turn every dish into monster lasagna without fail or monster tartare that is i might add a wildly exclusive monster food that is pretty handy in turning durians into something decent at least well at least for weber players that is weber players that oddly will still take damage from normal durians despite everything we just bloody mentioned but not the two dishes that durians can become. Make notes. But that's just the start of this durian hype train, everybody, as there's a pretty decent argument to be made about how these stinky things might have the best crop combinations in this game. Yeah, sure, we will come to find that due to a durian's limitations, we ourselves are limited to only six combos in total with the things. However, when we can mix and match durians with onions, dragon fruits, pomegranates, potatoes, and eggplants, we're already talking some of the best crops in this game anyways, so I don't think the numbers matter at all. Heck, even matching with potatoes and onions alone is incredible, so take advantage. But yes, those limitations. How do we even start planting Durian's beard? Well, like a few others that came before them, we do have the option of a King of the Merms when it comes to Durian Seed specifically, however this is a game of pure chance that also isn't the easiest thing to access in the first place. So then, it's time to play another game of chance by planting seeds at random in hopes of them sprouting into a durian vine 1.4% of the time in autumn, 1.7% of the time once the white stuff begins to fall, a whopping 2.5% chance during the heavy rains of spring, and finally, a 1.6% of the time come summer. Yeah, not great. Some of the lowest around, actually. But do note that that 2.5% chance corresponds with their favorite season at the end of the day. Which leads us to our final reminder of the one crop, one plot method of farming, everybody. A simple technique that can easily be expanded to one crop, 100 plots if you do so choose. All it means is that for any crop of your choosing, all you need to do is water, tend, and fertilize them at each and every stage needed while matching the seasons. And for durians here, that all comes down to composting in spring, pretty much. Compost nutrients can and will come from the likes of rot, rotten eggs, and compost itself, of course. However, again, never dismiss the three-in-ones. Wormwood's compost wraps, tree jam, and glomer goop all provide all three nutrients present in this game, with the wraps being the absolute best fertilizer around mind. That said, any crop that requires compost has an easy time going, simply to there being an entire structure and process dedicated to the thing anyways. So there you go. Do all of that, and you will really start stinking the place up with giant durians in no time. Be sure to grab a hammer and reap what you sow, or just forego all of what I just said with any crop and only match their seasons, as doing so is still going to result in a crop and its specific seed, no matter what. You do you. But before we say a final goodbye to all these fruits and veggies, allow me to toss in a look at a durian stages to help you identify what it is you might be farming after 
today, as well as a mention of the birdcage crop seed method of farming to help start you focusing on a crop of your choice as soon as possible. Never ever forget the latter, folks, even if it is now a one-to-one -one trade. And there you have it, everyone. Not only a guide on the seemingly always ignored and put aside durians of Don't Starve Together, but also the very end of a very long journey spent sowing the fields for every fruit and veggie we could find. 14 crops, and now a plot on how to grow each and every one of them efficiently. I say that's good and healthy stuff, but thanks for watching them all, folks. Well, wishes on your own farming adventures from here on out. Don't forget to poop, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.